All right. Good morning, Doug. Today, I want to talk about an article that you just published today in the International Man, which I'll include in the links below. Everyone, if you're not a subscriber to International Man, you definitely should be. There's lots of great content there, not only stuff that Doug writes, but uh, other great writers as well. So, um, But you're, you covered a topic that I've heard rumors about for months. First, I heard about it from some of our viewers, actually, and that's about this site called Deagle.com and their uh, forecast for population changes, massive population changes in 2025. And uh, how, first of all, how did it get on your radar? How did this even topic get on your radar? Hmm. Yeah, I can't remember who it was that uh, introduced me to this uh, <clears throat> Deagle website. I'd never heard of Deagle before, but uh, I did go on their website and their, um, Basically, what they do is they track um, uh, the economies of different countries in the world, about 200, most of them actually, almost all of them, uh, but mainly their military capabilities. So they're in some ways competitive with Jane's, which has been around for decades and is the well-known company when it comes to tracking military weapon systems, what they can accomplish, how much they cost, uh, all this type of thing. So it's, um, I guess Deagle's kind of a big deal, but it's not well promoted or well known like Jane says. Can't remember. Well, and they, but they had, so they, it. so they had this thing on their website that basically predicted uh, population levels in virtually every country in the world in 2025. Now, this is no longer on their site. They took it off, and you can find it in the Internet Archive, and I'll try and include a link to it in the description to this video as well. But that's the part that kind of stuck out most to you and that you were addressing in, in the article in International Man. Yeah, it's absolutely shocking. Uh, they list uh, all the countries of the world and give their current population and current GDP, and then what they project as population and GDP in 2025. And um, this just isn't the usual draw a straight ruler from, you know, 2% you know, compounded or something. They project that the US population uh, falls 50%, 70%, huge number like that. Same with Western Europe, same with Canada, and I think the same with Australia and New Zealand. I can't recall, I'm not looking at it now. But uh, interestingly, uh, it's only <clears throat> the Western world that suffers this huge population drop. Uh, all of the countries of the world, if you look at them on this, they all suffer significant population drops, but generally in the five to 10 to 15% area, not 50 to 70% the way uh, North America and Europe will. So their explanation as to why this may be, uh, at least what they published on the site, was um, kind of general. Uh, there's a reference to, um, you know, um, well, I, I imputed, they're looking at a biological war which would obviously be the, the best way to take out huge numbers of people, but also uh, as a reference to a, a possible famine uh, evidencing itself in the world. Well, because we're talking about a decline in the U.S. of something like... But not a conventional war. I mean, the, the, the decline in the U.S. is something like a, what, a reduction of for 70% of the population. That'd be you know, like 200 million people. Right, something like that. I mean, it's a massive. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, Which, this is. I mean, this is catastrophic. This would be the biggest thing in world history because it's not just North America. It's going to be Europe too, and uh, but they don't have any explanation. I, it would have been nice if they had an essay uh, explaining well exactly how do you come up with these figures based on what. I mean, when I first saw this thing, I. I, I thought, well, this must be some type of a, a spoof or some type of a trolling ex exercise because for an outfit that's moving in the circles that, uh, that uh, Deagle, whoever's in back of it, that's 
indeterminate. It's hard, it's hard to tell. It's a spook organization. Uh, you know, this is it, this is not going to uh, like get them all kinds of new business or something like that. That may, would make no sense from a, a business point of view. And, and I haven't seen any comments on this uh, in any of the uh, conventional media at all, or, or for that matter, even in the uh, um, alternative media, because nobody knows anything about Deagle. I wonder if Jane's had published this, if there would be massive comments from one place or another. Just don't know. Were you able, and so you, you spent a lot of time researching this, trying to, un, trying to understand, you know, um, really what they were trying to say, what it, what, what it would take in order to even achieve these population changes. And, um, you know, what were you, I guess, when you kind of dug into it, what, what did you come up with? Like, how, how, how is it even possible that those population changes could occur? Well, the only thing that makes sense to me is... Um, some type of a, um, a biological war. And, and of course, I've said on this podcast and, and elsewhere in articles I've written in internationalman.com as well, that it seems to me that uh, the US and China are slated for a real war. Uh, you know, not just a little sport war kind that we've been, that we had with, uh, places like uh, uh, Grenada, or for that matter, Afghanistan or Syria or Iraq. Uh, those, are, those are kind of sport wars where we're acting as a bully, but China would be hunting big game. Uh, so um, what would it look like uh, and how would it start? Uh, well, since the Chinese have been of late, uh, saying things and appearing to make preparations to uh, take over Taiwan and the U.S. is pledged to defend Taiwan, maybe that'll start it. Uh, uh, and that doesn't have to turn into World War III, even if, even if the Chinese sink a couple of uh, aircraft carriers, that would not necessarily start World War III. I mean, if we sank enough Chinese bullets and so forth, maybe they just decide, let's, let's call this off before it gets out of control. But on the other hand, it could, it could thoroughly spin out of control. A nuclear war, eh, Chinese are going to want to stay away from that because they, they'd lose at this point. Well, they and don't nobody wins a nuclear war. Obviously. And there's the predicted population declines for China are not, are not like at all what we have. So it's like if there were a nuclear war, you would have to assume that we'd be able to we would be able to deliver some serious punishment on their side too. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I'm a believer that the, uh, I mean, in addition to the computer slash cyber element of World War III, which will be huge, obviously, uh, you just shut down the country's infrastructure because everything runs on computers these days. In addition to the space war uh, element of, uh, this because everything's done by satellites these days and who knows what type of weapons have already been mounted uh, on the high frontier to uh, attack enemy bases and of course you've got a nuclear war and a conventional war but the thing that nobody's talking about is biological war which uh, coincides kind of oddly with this COVID hysteria and there are so many advantages looking at it from a Dr. Strangelove point of view, uh, the point of view of a, a marginally psychotic political leader or general uh, to biological war, especially when we're talking about China, because of course the Chinese, uh, the Han Chinese, which are the vast majority of, uh, of the population there, share lots of genetic characteristics. So it would be you know, easy, I would think, for people that know about these things to um, find the common denominator that makes Chinese people look like Chinese people. And it's, it's not just skin color or 
upper catholic fold or on the eyes and things like that uh, perhaps the bacteria that would um, insulate them and take out people that don't have those Chinese genes. It makes a lot of sense. And of course, from the looking at society, uh, that'd be a little bit tougher, but you can breed um, a biological weapon directed at the Chinese, as opposed to a Chinese breeding one that, that they're insulated from. And of course, if you're gonna launch a bio war, you can buy, you can buy um, inoculation, protect your people, but the enemy is not inoculated. So that's another way of playing the game. Another advantage to a biological war is that uh, you don't need all these high priced delivery systems. Like if you start a nuclear war, people are gonna know exactly where those missiles are coming from. But if it's a biological war, I mean, it could be a, a tourist or it could be something in the mail or, so that, uh, that you have plausible deniability. So that maybe you won't be counterattacked or counterattacked in time because you're just not sure who did it, quite frankly. And uh, has access to a high school level uh, chemistry lab and a CRISPR machine can alter DNA and genomes. And who knows what could be done at this point because listen, all we really know about it, unless we're experts in the field, is what filters down through the mainstream press. We bother, don't know what they're talking about anyway. So uh, yeah, biological war is the way it's, and of course, a big advantage with bio war is that all the materiel remains. It just takes out uh, the so-called bad guys, who are the bad guys are, depends on which side you're on. Uh, so, you know, you're not dealing with a smoking ruin, but uh, you know, all the good stuff that you want is still there. So I, I think, I, I don't think there's any doubt we're gonna have a biological war when uh, we have World War III, but anybody can start World War III. Like I said, anybody with some ex ex expertise and a, and a chemistry lab could do it too. So this is, this is the big thing that nobody talks about. And the interesting thing is this Deagle website, it doesn't put its finger on biological war exactly, but uh, definitely puts that across as a possibility. So that, I think that's it in a nutshell, Matt. It doesn't, it's a, uh, they, you know, they say some things, they have this lengthy disclaimer at the bottom of, you know, their tables of uh, population changes. And, you know, they say things like, the Western world success model has been built over societies with no resilience that can barely withstand any hardship, even a low dense and in intensity one. It was assumed, uh, but we got the full confirmation beyond a doubt with COVID. And uh, I don't know. I mean, it just seems mm -hmm. that the whole thing to me, and I actually, I think people should read the entire disclaimer that they have because, you know, they're just basically, they've been, they basically say the things that we've been talking about here for the last hundred and you know fourteen episodes of this that we just that you know the U.S. is not in a great position to be able to withstand uh, you know any difficulty. They talk about the financial situation. They talk about the dollar hegemony, um, you know, and uh, and but it's but still the predictions are so utterly shocking that my my worry when I saw this a viewer actually brought this to my attention maybe six months ago. And I thought I saw it and I go, holy crap, that's crazy. And then I and then I just tried to dig around and find information on these guys. And that's where I ran into trouble. And so, you know, the question is, is like how seriously should we take any of these things that coming that are coming out of this website? Well, <clears throat> when I lived in Washington, DC uh, many years ago. Uh, one way or another, I had lots of contacts in the uh, spook and military communities. And uh, if this was then, I could make a number of phone calls and maybe get the inside skinny. But the guys that I knew uh, in those days are, uh, they've all joined the ranks of the departed. 
uh, one way or another, so that uh, I don't really have any connections there anymore. Uh, like one guy still working for the Rand Corporation. And I could, I think I, I'll try to reach out to him and ask him because of course Rand Corporation is, you know, that's really the biggest thing yeah. in, that, in the whole area. I'd like to get to the bottom of this because it's so outrageous what these people have, have published, but outrageous, but also credible. And, yeah. uh, you know, the fact is that the world is, the whole world now actually is highly urbanized. And the problem, I mean, there are many advantages to being urbanized. Uh, that's why we have the high standard of living that we do. But uh, at the same time, uh, if things are urbanized, it, it's all about supply chains. I mean, how long would you be able to survive in New York City if the trucks stopped running for like two or three days? Yep. There'd be no food, quite frankly. Yep. And, and then what happens? Okay. And that's true of every big city. And it really doesn't matter whether you're an office worker who's got no skills except for shuffling paper or a ghetto rat who's got no skills except gangbanging or dealing drugs or whatever. All these people wouldn't be able to feed themselves, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, a highly complex civilization is one that is... Um, I, I think it was Nassim Taleb that went into this about they're not by nature anti-fragile. They're fragile. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all of the food in the U.S. is either produced by the two or three percent of our population that works on farms. But these are gigantic monoculture farms, generally speaking. Uh, is well, even it possible they, even they that a virus can't. or back? back in, Sorry, I was just going to say, even those those farmers can't survive without the complex system because they require fertilizers and even food their own food, like they're because they're just producing soybeans or corn or something like that themselves. Like they aren't actually producing the the, the components that one would require to actually live. It requires you know this complex economy in order for anybody to to get the finished goods that we need for our basic survival. Yes, and they need diesel fuel and gasoline to do any of this. I mean, even more basic. So uh, there's all kinds of ways that the agricultural production line could be shut down. In addition, of course, the rest of the food is imported from abroad. Uh, so there's all kinds of things that can go wrong in a very complex society that's fragile. And it's especially fragile because of uh, the influence of government, all kinds of stupid distortions that they've cranked into um, to the system. So maybe it would be mass starvation from, I mean, they're never really clear why yeah. this could happen. Yeah, they're never clear. So we get it. So I, I, yeah, I'm going to, I'll, let me just talk, talk, explain real quickly that I do have a, one friend who is a former CIA who, um, you know, was really connected to one of the most powerful people uh, in intelligence services for a long time and, and, and was probably more powerful after he left them, actually. And I just asked him about it. And so when I told him the website name, I, I just said, well, do you know anything about these guys? Who's behind it? I mean, are they credible at all? What, you know, what, what information can you give me? His immediate response to it was, well, um, I have a classmate or a friend of mine was a West Point classmate with Edwin Deagle and, but he died in February and, but his assumption was that this Edwin Deagle, that this was his, because Edwin Deagle was basically had, it worked, you know, to keep track of this stuff while he was in, um, I believe in the Air Force. And then he later worked for, um, you know, was associated with the Rockefeller Foundation. But I don't know for sure if it's the same guy because the last name is spelled differently. Uh, just a bit. It's the the e and the l in the end are re reversed. But it's it is it's interesting that when I brought it up to him, this guy who 
you know, was in the CIA for a long time, West Point grad, like, you know, um, that immediately he came up with Edwin Deagle. So I don't know if that's, if that's really it or not. I asked him to ask around. He has a lot of feelers out trying to get more information about it. He's hearing different things from different people. But um, I, I think it, it's worth, I'm going to keep poking myself to just see what I can find out about it because uh, this, it's the source is the question. Because if, if the source really is credible, it was really utilized um, by the powers that be, then I think it's really, really important information. So, and I think it's worth re reaching out to your friend at the Rand Corporation just to see if they would just dismiss it out of hand or if they think there might be something to whoever's behind it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But it's uh, especially in these strange times that we're living in, it's uh, kind of wild and crazy, quite frankly, it, to uh, to see it, this. Well, it's certainly the most um, outrageous prediction I've seen. Uh, you know, I mean, just I'm not saying it's wrong uh, or right. I'm just saying it's certainly the most extreme prediction I've seen about our near future. God forbid some newsletter copywriter sees this and decides it's a fantastic way to uh, incite the mob to send in money to oh, find God. out more. <laughs> oh, God. Now that you said it, you know it's going to happen. You know it's going <laughs> to I know. Because <laughs> one, one of the strange things about life is that anything that can happen eventually will happen. It's just the law of large numbers. Yeah. So yeah, anything that can be imagined can be done. Anything that can be done will be done. I mean, show me an example where that's not true. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I don't have one. Well, let's. Uh, I'm on your end. I think it's. I think it's worth both of us continuing to investigate this further. And if we get new information, then we you know update our viewers on what we find out. And for our viewers out there, if you, you know, if you have any information on you know, this site, who, who's behind it specifically, and, uh, you know, uh, how, how credible it all is, we'd love to, we'd love to hear whatever you've got to say about it. So, you know, you can uh, communicate with us in the Telegram group, or um, reach out to us via email, there's an email in the, in the, in the uh, channel description as well. But this is a very, very interesting thing. And uh, it could all be, it could all be nonsense. But the fact that they've got such accurate information on uh, global armaments really makes you think that there's something. It's not just a, you know, some. It's not just some trick that somebody's running on uh, on all of us. And and maybe the people that have been producing all those zombie movies and zombie series, maybe they have an inside track, and we weren't taking them seriously all this time. Exactly. Exactly. So let us let us know what you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I I love it when. When the people involved in this have a sense of humor, black, <laughs> but still a sense of humor. Yeah, yeah, dark humor still still can be funny until it uh, until you actually start seeing a zombie apocalypse take place around you. Then you start to <laughs> a little less funny. But um, but yeah, so viewers, let us know, please, if you have any information on this. And uh, Doug and I will keep investigating. You know, with the, among the uh, friends that we have that might have some information on it, and we'll go from there. Okay. So, so thank you very much, Doug, and we'll leave it at that, and we'll, uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Thanks, Matt. Hasta mañana.